For 67 years, a Japanese naval diary retrieved from a Second World War battlefield was lost among the belongings of an Australian war veteran from country New South Wales. When his daughter-in-law, Lindy Glover, found the diary, she felt compelled to return it and started a two-year hunt for family members in Japan. What happened next is extraordinary, as Natasha Johnson reports. A bush retreat near the New South Wales town of Orange is a long way from the battlefields of World War II. But recently, a relic of that conflict disturbed Lindy Glover's peaceful existence. It became a very um, heavy responsibility. It was like a piece of history in your hand, like a piece of somebody else's life, that you really had no right to have. What she had was an exquisite Japanese naval diary, rich with writings, prints and a world map with pen markings perhaps highlighting the theatre of war. Lindy Glover's father-in-law, Alexander Glover, a soldier in the 2nd 3rd Pioneer Battalion, brought the diary back from New Guinea. But how it came into his hands and what secrets were recorded on its pages had never been revealed. It was not something that was ever on show. It was put away in a box, not mentioned, not talked about. When Alexander Glover died in 1994, the diary was handed down to his son Gordon, Lindy's husband, who'd served in the RAAF. Three years later, Gordon Glover died suddenly and a grief-stricken Lindy packed his things into a suitcase and stored them in the shed. There the diary sat for a decade until 2008 and a chance encounter with someone who happened to mention a connection to the Australian War Memorial. It was almost like the diary yelled at me and I thought, oh, I must do something about that. And so began her quest to send the diary home. Through the war memorial, Lindy Glover found researcher Keiko Tamura, who was then cataloguing Japanese war items in Australia. She was surprised to see such a well-preserved naval diary when so many went down with the ship. It's just amazing because um, it's very rare for those diary to be kept uh, outside you know, uh, the Japan. Keiko Tamura gave Lindy Glover a snippet of information. And she was able to give me his name, which was Shigeki Fukushima, the name of his battleship, the battleship Fuzo. Down below, a Jap cruiser circles after direct bomb hits. The Fuzo had been in the Battle of Midway before seeing action in the waters off PNG in late 1943. Lindy Glover passed what she knew to the Japanese consulate in Sydney, which has a tracing program, but expectations were low. I think it's very difficult. Uh, sometimes it depends upon luck. So for two years, she waited and wondered. Every time I went into that office, five times a day, I would look at that little diary and think, you know, you've got to go somewhere. I hope you can go somewhere. And I'd take it down and I'd flip through the pages and I would try to imagine who wrote it and what it was about. Then in December last year, a phone call brought incredible news. I was absolutely awestruck when the Japanese consulate told me they had found his daughter and it was wonderful. In the city of Hiroshima, Yurie Nobuhiro was stunned to hear a voice from the grave 67 years after her father died. She was two years old and has no memory of him, left with just a photo and a lock of hair. How did you feel the first time you touched it and first read it? <laughs> very happy to have the diary, but I was very sad at the same time. I felt my father didn't really want to die. She penned a heartfelt letter of gratitude to Lindy Glover, but after months of writing to each other, Yurie Nobuhiro wanted to personally thank the keeper of the diary. I'm going to cry. <laughs> 
Yurie Nobuhiro and her family flew to Sydney for an emotion-charged meeting with Lindy Glover and her family. Nice to meet you. The Lost Diaries journey home has had a profound impact on both women. I felt his soul really wanted to go back to me. I felt his determination that he really wanted to come back to me. I'm very grateful to Lindy. I think there are so few times in life where you get to do something that makes your own soul sing and that's exactly what it's done it's um it's made me feel wonderful very joyous amid the hugs tears and an exchange of gifts past hurts were healed my father must be pleased to see us meeting together today <laughs> Lindy Glover had long wondered what was written in the diary's pages. Look at that little thing. Yurie Nobuhiro revealed that her father had recorded happy family memories and his love for his wife and only child. He wrote in a diary that he thought about his daughter every day. Belated comfort for Yurie Nobuhiro, whose heartbroken mother died a few years after her father when she was just six years old. She'd long believed her father died at sea, but he'd apparently travelled on another warship and landed in New Guinea in early 1943. On the 26th of March, he wrote of a deadly air raid on his camp. The person who was next to him died, but he survived. He wrote, we can't change our destinies. That was the last entry in the diary. For Lindy Glover, that date eased a fear that her father-in-law may have been directly involved in Shigeaki Fukushima's death. National Archives records show Alex Glover didn't arrive in New Guinea until five months later. How he came across the diary remains a mystery. In a poignant climax to this remarkable reconciliation, these new friends visited the War Memorial in Hyde Park. There they wrote the names of the servicemen who brought them together on stars that will be burnt and the ashes scattered by schoolchildren soon to visit the battlefields in Papua New Guinea. They're in awe of the powerful meaning of a simple act of kindness. I haven't brought world peace or um, you know anything big. I've done a really tiny little thing, but it's brought a great deal of joy. What a lovely story, Natasha Johnson reporting.